This is video number 49 in our electrical circuits analysis series. Um, in this video, we want to determine for our bridge circuit its Thevenin and Norton uh, equivalent circuits. And in the previous video, number 48, we introduced that concept there of the principles that are involved in determining Norton and Thevenin um, circuit equivalents. So if you haven't seen that video, you might find that helpful. Also a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is uh, featured at the website digital-university.org. Okay, let's take a look at our circuit. We have just a single voltage source and imagine if we had a resistor across these terminals, say a load resistor, we just would have plugged it in. What uh, voltage would that resistor experience and what current source would it also experience? And those are the questions that are answered when we determine our uh, Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. The first step here then, let's say we're going to determine its Thevenin equivalent. The first step is to determine the um, voltage drop across these terminals here or to determine the uh, open circuit voltage. And if we know what the potential is at point B, and also at point A, then of course we just take the difference and we can determine that. And for this circuit that is pretty easy to do because here we can, here we have a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm resistor in series, so we know what the voltage drop across the 6 ohm one is. We can determine it pretty uh, easily just by using the voltage divider principle. We had that I think in our very first video and that is equal to the value of this resistor divided by the value of this one plus this one, the two resistors that are in series, that's 9, and the voltage drop across the two resistors in series is 72, and 9 goes into there 8 times times 6, that's 48 volts. So we know what the voltage drop across here is. In just a minute we'll go ahead and write that into the circuit. But let's also determine the voltage drop across the 12 ohm resistor. Here we have the 12 ohm and the 4 ohm ones are in series. So again using the voltage divider principle this is pretty straightforward to determine. It's 12 divided by this sum. That's 16 times the voltage drop across both of them. That's 72 volts. And that's 3 fourths of 72. I think that comes out to 54 volts. So let's write these in. The voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor is 48 volts and the polarity of it is like this plus minus 48 volts and here it's plus minus 54 volts. Now, to determine the potential across these terminals here, um, let's assume, we may have to change our assumption, but let's assume that terminal A is negative with respect to terminal B. And with that in mind then, let's just go ahead and go around this loop and add up all the voltage drops, which of course according to Kirchhoff's laws should sum up to zero. So let's just keep things in focus. 
All right, the voltage drop across here, we don't know. So we'll call that E sub X. And then we go, we're going to go in this direction. So here, we're going from minus to plus. So that's plus 48 volts. Then here we're going plus to minus. So that is minus 54 volts. And those have to add up to be zero. So we see that E6 has to be 6 volts. And that's a positive number, so our assumption was correct. If this came out to be negative 6 volts, then this would be the negative terminal, and this would be the positive one. Okay, but that means then that our open circuit voltage is 6 volts, and that is then the Thevenin voltage. Now, after determining that, the next step is to determine the Thevenin resistance. And as we um, discussed in the previous video, the way we go about that is whatever current sources or whatever voltage sources are present, we remove them. And once that's done, then we ask ourselves, for the circuit that remains, what is the resistance of that circuit as seen across these terminals, A and B? Now here, schematically, to remove the voltage source, we would just draw a line like this. Now there is no potential drop. If we had a current source here, something that was adding current to the circuit, then schematically the way to remove it from the circuit is to break the circuit here. Now there is no current flowing into the circuit. Okay, but for our problem, we had a voltage source of 72 volts. And let's just redraw it with this removed, with the voltage source removed. So here we have 6 ohms and 3 ohms. This is a node, but we can always just draw it like this because this is a conductor. Same thing here. These are coming into a single point. For the conductor, you can draw it like this. It's equivalent. This is 6 ohms. This is 3 ohms. This is 12 and 4, and then we have the terminals like this. Terminal A, Terminal B, and here we just draw a line to the voltage source, so it looks like this. No voltage source here. Now we ask ourselves, what would be the resistance of the circuit as seen across these terminals, A, B. And imagine if we had, say, hooked up a potentiometer across those terminals. That potentiometer puts out a very small current. So imagine the current coming like this, and then right away it's going to get split between the 6 ohm and the 3 ohm resistor. So that means that they're in parallel. And the current that comes here of course, it's going to go from point B and flow around back to point A, where the potentiometer is, is hooked across the terminals. So here it splits, so the 6 and the 3 are in parallel. Then when the current is here, it can go through the 4 ohm resistor to return to point A, or it could go through the 12 ohm resistor to return to point A. Likewise, the current that went up here, that can go through here, to return to point A, or it can go through the 4 ohm resistor to return to point A. So that means then that the 12 volt, or the 12 ohm, and the 4 ohm resistors are in parallel. Um, let's just redraw this to make certain that we're clear on this point. So here we have terminal B, 
and then here we have the 6 ohm resistor and then the 3 ohm resistor and then here we have terminal A the 12 ohm resistor the 4 ohm resistor and then like this so here we have imagine a potentiometer hooked across the terminals and it puts out a small current it gets split across these parallel resistors then goes to here then gets split across these two parallel resistors and returns back to point A where the other terminal of the potentiometer is hooked up so here these then have equivalent resistance of 2 ohms just 6 times 3 divided by 6 plus 3 18 divided by 9 and for here the equivalent resistance will be 12 times 4 that's 48 divided by 12 plus 4 that's 16 so the equivalent resistance is 3 so here then for our circuit the resistance that would be seen across the terminals AB would be 2 ohms plus 3 ohms or a total of 5 ohms so that is the Thevenin resistance so the resistance across those terminals is 5 ohms and that is the Thevenin resistance so here then we're all set to draw the Thevenin equivalent of this bridge circuit and we're going to have a voltage source of 6 volts in series with that is the Thevenin resistance and we can see obviously the open circuit voltage is 6 volts just like it is across here and the uh, circuit that would be supplied or the current that would be supplied to a load resistor here that would just simply be equal to 6 divided by 5 1.2 amps now that is so this is the Thevenin equivalent of this bridge circuit assuming that we're putting a load resistor across the terminals AB what would be the Norton equivalent and for the Norton equivalent it has the same Thevenin resistance we want to know how could we replace this circuit with one that has a current source and remember in video number 22 we explained or actually proved it it's, it's quite simple to quite straightforward to show that if you have a voltage source with a current in series with it that's equivalent to a current source where the resistor is in parallel to it like this and the magnitude of that current source is this voltage divided by that resistance 1.2 amps and we can see that here this is the Norton equivalent circuit and we can see that the open circuit voltage would be just this current going through the resistor here and that would be 
6 volt drop across that resistor, which would also be the open circuit voltage as well. So that's the Norton equivalent of our bridge circuit. Now, notice that in this problem, we first determined the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit. Then with that information, it was real simple to determine the Norton equivalent. But suppose that when the problem was set up, with our original circuit, like this, and we decided, let's not determine the Thevenin equivalent of this circuit. Let's just start right from square one and determine the Norton equivalent of it. Then once we know that, we use that information to draw the Thevenin equivalent circuit. And you can do that, and we're going to do it in the next video, but it turns out that it's considerably longer. And that's one of the things you want to keep in mind when you have a circuit and you wanted to determine equivalent circuit, what should be the easier way to proceed? Right away, find the Thevenin equivalent circuit, or right away, find the Norton equivalent circuit. Um, as we saw in this video, to determine the Thevenin equivalent of it was pretty simple. If we're going to determine from square one, right ab initio, the Norton equivalent of it, we can do it, but it involves quite a bit more work. So that's what we'll do in the next video. So come back, join us for that video. We're going to look at the same circuit only from a different point of view. And that is right from square one, ab initio, determine what its Norton equivalent is. So come back, uh, join us for that video, and we'll continue on with our problem here.